Hey, Brian. Hey, Vic. How, how, how was your buy? Uh, it was good. It was good. Got a lot of work in and uh, had some time down. So uh, anxious to get back and, and get going here. We had a, our first day back with the, with the players today, and uh, it was a good start. Uh, Sean mentioned that uh, – sorry, I had that off. Sean mentioned uh, that the running game, running offense, got sort of the deep dive treatment, among other areas, this week. From your standpoint, what did that entail? Well, I'd say every area did. That's what you do in a bye week. It's, it's what we've always done in the bye weeks. Um, in the 20 years that, that I've been part of the National Football League when we've had them, um, you know, you, you, you go back and we try to do it every week, Vic, as, as the season goes on because it can get away from you really quickly. We do it, we do it every few weeks. So it was just a, a continuation of, of what we do self-scout-wise. You know, you look at a lot of different things. You start with yourself. Um, and you look at formations and motions and shifts and why, where you're trying to gain advantage in the running game, whether that by a, a certain technique of a defense alignment or a force issue with a safety or how to get it to where we need to get it. Uh, take a look at the fundamentals of, of what we're doing and, and how we're teaching it. Um, maybe we can change a drill. You know, you go back to the process of, of trying to improve the things. It's not necessarily the thing right in front of your face. Sometimes it's, it's other things. So you try to make little adjustments to a practice schedule or a drill work or, you know, send a quarterback down to do some more cadences with them. Um, but it's not just the run game, Vic. We did it with, you know, the passing game and situational stuff. And, um, you know, it was a good week to, to really dive into all that stuff. Again, it's something that we do. I'd say we do it on a consistent basis. Um, you do it with the game that you just played, um, you know, the next day on a Monday with, with the way we do it offensively, we do it collectively uh, and watch it together. And you're able to collaborate and talk and go through adjustments. And, uh, you know, and there's sometimes you, you stay in after that and do the last three games. So that's something that we, you know, we, we've done here for a while. We'll continue to do that. It's not just, you know, the bye week, there's an end all be all. Um, it's a continuation process of, of the evaluation of, of yourself that you do. And Brian, one more. John Feliciano, so much is made uh, by his teammates. And I'm sure at some point you might have mentioned it or Sean. His demeanor, his his the way he goes about things in this, for sake of a better word, nasty way, aggressive way, it, it, as best as you can encapsulate that. What does that? What's your thought process about this demeanor thing with John Feliciano and and how it you know permeates if it can? Yeah, I just I think he's he has the traits that we covet for an offensive lineman. He's he's smart, he's tough, and he he loves football. Uh, when you have big guys that are smart and tough and love football that that give a lot of effort. Um, and have an aggressive mindset, that's, that's really what we're looking for uh, out of all our offensive linemen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brian, it's John Scott. Um, hey, John. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. good. As rested as we could be, you know, uh, sticking around here. Okay. And, um, it appears, we don't know officially the injury report yet, but it appears more guys like Mitch and Cody are uh, going to be back or really close – what is that going to do to have your full complement of offensive linemen in regards to building continuity? Yeah, I think anytime you can have uh, your players out there collectively working together, uh, that helps, whether that be with the offensive line or the receiver group. Um, you know, hopefully that everybody will be, be ready to go here as we get practicing tomorrow. And, um, you know, it's, it's good for everybody. I know it's a, a theme and, and a, a topic that we've discussed with you, even dating back to last year and, and throughout this year, continuity on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. How truly important is that for success? And especially, we, I understand that usually you, you get more, uh, that helps as the season goes on. And obviously you haven't been able to, to get that to this point. Yeah, I mean, I, playing well helps. That's what really helps is, is – playing well and communicating and again you know you have calls and, and things like that that the guys communicate with you know whether it's a right guard communicates with the right tackle or the center center communicates with everybody when you have you know when you have a group in there that that can do it on a consistent basis um you know maybe that quickens up a little bit but again we have confidence in the guys that we have out there um to go ahead and, and work together whoever that may be you know there's probably not a lot of lines that that have played uh, this year that have a lot of continuity. So, um, you know, our job is to make sure that we teach all our guys what they need to do and that they go out and they do it well. Thanks, Brian.
Thank you. Hey, Brian, Adam Benini. Hey, Adam. Hope you had a good buy. Um, Vic had asked you about, uh, you know, the run game, and I'm more interested in kind of your general evaluation, maybe some of the things, very much including the passing game, which has put up some impressive numbers uh, over this portion of the season and, and looking down the stretch here. What did, I don't know, what, what can you describe about what was revealed during that uh, kind of deep dive analysis? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really a lot, Adam. It's, it's you know, it's a, it'd be a long answer uh, to, I'd say, a, you know, a, a question that uh, is an important question for all of us. Um, you know, we've, we've improved in, in some areas and in the passing game, and there's other areas that we can continue to prove on, you know, uh, numbers all aside, what you're trying to do when you're, when you're looking at it is really dive deep into the details, uh, whether that's the start of the formation, um, our alignment, uh, our splits, our communication with the, the protection aspect of it, uh, the quarterback's reads, uh, how we do in scramble drills, um, potential quarterback checks, um, audibles, check with me's. Uh, there's so many different things that you evaluate uh, and each coach does it by their position. Um, and then we all sit in there together and we talk about it. So it's not just, you know, I'm sitting in there with, with Chad Hall, with the receiver coach, you know, I'm, I'm Bobby's in there too. And we're all, we're talking about how it's all intertwined, uh, which it really is, you know, there's, there's you know, cause and effect for every play that we have that each position group. Um, and that starts with me has to be on the same page in order for a play to work offensively for the most part. It's, it's tough in this league to, you know, have nine guys doing one thing and two guys doing the next, or it's tough if you get a play call in later and they don't have time to adjust. Um, you know, we're all in this together. We're working together to, uh, to make sure we're improving. Again, that's something that we try to do on a, on a week to week basis uh, because that's what you need to do in this league. Um, but there were a lot of things that, you know, we made some improvements on from, from what we talked about in the off season and last year. And there's, and there's certainly things that we can do better. And, you know, we'll have a challenging team that, that comes up that, that does a good job of rushing the passer this week. All right, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brian. It's Kim Jones. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, Kim. How are you? Great. I'm fine. Thank you. And I good. hope you are too. Um, Thanks. Every, every coach I've, I've covered, you know, who makes anything of himself, I think has a tough love aspect to his job, right? I mean, you have to correct whether you have a winning record or not. You have to be able to get better in this league. I'm just wondering how receptive is your group as an offense to those criticisms and that idea that you have to challenge them? And is there anyone in particular on the offense who helps you set that tone? No, we, can we try to be, you know, I try to be consistent every week with, with our players and our coaches. I think that, you know, being up one week and down the next week, just based on a result is, is not very, is, is counterproductive at times, uh, in particular uh, positions of leadership. I think consistency and truth go a long way. And as long as you can build the relationships uh, prior to those things, you, you can manage tough times. Because uh, we all know there'll be tough times in this business. Uh, there'll be criticism. There'll be losses. There'll be things that, that try to break you down a little bit. But you need to stay strong and, and face adversity head on. And the way you do that is to build a solid foundation of relationships where you know, the trust level, the respect level, the accountability, the integrity, the loyalty of, of you know, me to you and you to me and, and a coach to a player and a player to a coach, maybe from a different position group, that's offensively how we approach it. Uh, it's not, you know, you're sitting in there and, and ripping a guy in a meeting. Uh, there's a, a clear level of an expectation and a standard that we all should hold ourselves accountable to. Uh, and if we're not reaching that standard or something causes us not to reach it, then you know, our answer as a coach is to, to find out why uh, and to try to help the player. And the same thing with the players to help one another. But uh, that's a collective team effort um, in our room. And you know, I'm very appreciative for the guys, how they approach things and, and the things that, you know, the feedback that we give back to them and they give back to us. Um, you know, it's a, it's a team sport. And I think it's a team sport when it's, you know, you're dealing with a coach and a player too. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Hey, Brian. Um, hey buddy, how are you? I'm good. Uh, you've been in a lot of different cities during your career, and you know now being back in, in your home base. I mean, what's what's what are weeks like to buy, and you know some off season weeks where, you know you're you're here. What what's that like for you being around family and stuff like that? Yeah, it's good. You know, your, your family is, is is everything to you. Um, 
you know, we, we work hard in this job and, you know, I have, you know, my wife and you know, we have, have six children that, that it's, it's good to be around, but then you have, you know, you have times where you can visit your grandparents who, you know, live right down the road from the stadium, the house that you grew up in that, that you know, the previous 20 some years you didn't have an opportunity to do or, you know, go visit an aunt and uncle that, that mean the world to you. So, um, you know, family's important and you know, that's some, something that you take for granted when you're here or when you're in your hometown. But, you know, when you're at other places and you don't get an opportunity to do that, it just means that much more. Mm -hmm. And in terms of football, you know, you take a guy like, you know, Mitch, who, you know, from my conversations with him over the last two years, you know, he cares a lot about this. So when there's something that pops up like this, and like Sean said, we'll see what happens this week. What are those conversations like with a guy who obviously takes pride in what he does to, to maybe not be out there as one of the five best? I mean, what's, what's that like? Uh, those are conversations that, that you have uh, more times than you think in this business uh, with whether it's players or staff. And again, when you're in a leadership role, you, you just be, you're honest, um, you're forthright. Uh, you have some, you know, empathy if, if something changes, because look, everybody puts a lot of time and effort and energy and work into it. Um, so we'll see what happens this week. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Coach, good afternoon. Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. How you doing, sir? Good, Mook. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Um, last year, you know, well, actually this year, we can go to this year, number one passing, rushing 20. If those roles have reversed, you know what I mean? Uh, going into December, you want to be playing your best football. Uh, you know, it's going to be cold. It's going to be wet. So how do you get a more balanced attack going into December, Coach? Well, you, you don't know if it's going to be cold or wet just yet around here. One day it could be 60 and the next it could be 20. You're not, you're not sure about that. So you take, you take them as they come. Um, and, and you try to prepare in advance for, you know, possible conditions that you might have. Um, and again, what we're always going to do is what we think is best for our offensive football team to attack a defense, um, whether that's throw it 50 times or, or, or run it 50 times or have some type of balance. You know, I can't tell you exactly how the game's going to go, uh, but that's a philosophy that I was brought up in this business. Uh, and it's a philosophy that I believe in. Um, and, you know, whatever that entails, again, it doesn't matter. You know, how we get it done, it just matters if we get it done. Right about that, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you.